Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular City Council meeting of February 2nd, 2022. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Weir. Here. Councilmember Arias. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Parlier. Here. Thank you. At this time, we have the pleasure of having Pastor Will Gutierrez, co-pastor of the Garden, who will offer the invocation. Pastor Will has been very involved in bringing peace to our community and in outreach as to those who have the greatest challenges. Following the invocation, Carter Beardsley will lead us. Following in the invocation, Carter Beardsley will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Carter is the Ward 4 Commissioner for our Youth Commission. He's a freshman at Frontier High School, ASB President, Class of 2025, Student of the Year, member of the Key Club and Rotary Club, uh, probably Interact, and so much more. So we have the pleasure of having great, outstanding students. Would you all please stand for the invocation? Chapter one, uh, chapter two, uh, we're going to read verse one. It says, first of all, then I urge that petitions, specific requests, prayers, intercessions, prayer for others, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all people, for kings and all who are in positions of high authority, so that we may live a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. So Lord, we just pray right now that you would have your way, not only in this meeting here, but Lord, through the leadership of our city. We thank you, God, for this time, and we thank you for the leaders that are even rising up and coming together. We thank you for the unity of this community. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to serve, to love, and to just show your goodness every single day. Uh, we thank you for guidance. We thank you for protection, and we thank you for the strength of this amazing city of Bakersfield. We pray nothing but blessings and great encouragement over everyone who leads and who steps foot into leadership in this beautiful community. We love you, and we thank you, and we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. And Anthony, would you get a picture of our youth commissioner, too, and pastor? You can do it out in the, wherever you want. Thank you so much, Pastor and Carter. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos. For safety reasons and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting prevents the city council from conducting the business of the city. Consider this a first warning to everyone in attendance that conduct that disrupts the meeting may result in expulsion and or the chamber being closed. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4A, proclamation to the safely surrendered Baby Coalition declaring Safe Surrender Baby Awareness Month in Bakersfield during February 2022. 
Well, I'm, gl I'm glad to have with us uh, a safe surrender team, and we're going to talk more about who they are. Janice Slagle of the Kern County Department of Human Services, Aaron Rogers with the Bakersville Pregnancy Center, and Roland Meyer with First Five Kern. We are so fortunate in the city of Bakersfield to be able to protect life. And that's what you're going to hear today is when people choose to give up their babies, they have a safe place for those babies to go. The Safely Surrender Baby Law was first enacted in 2001. This law has helped decrease the number of newborn infants uh, dying because of abandonment. And we are just very pleased that they have safe locations. We're so grateful for the coalition, for their dedication for all of these years and the many lives that have been saved. So it's my honor to be able to read this proclamation. The mayor of the city of Bakersfield, California, has officially proclaimed February 2022 as Safely Surrendered Baby Awareness Month in our city in recognition of the Safely Surrendered Baby Coalition and its efforts to provide a safe alternative for newborn babies to be safely surrendered. In recognition of the partnership of government, nonprofit organizations, private business, and residents that are committed to providing places of sanctuary for these babies. In recognition of the need to heighten public awareness regarding this issue and the need to provide a safe refuge for the innocent newborns involved. In recognition of the six infants safely surrendered in 2021 and in recognition of the 90 precious infants safely surrendered since the program's inception in 2006. And now it is my honor to be able to turn this over to present this. And is there a video at this point? Would you like when to the see the video first? Okay, may we have the video, please? When a child is born, it should be the happiest time in one's life. But for some, it's just too difficult to handle. Think before you do the unthinkable. There is an option. Don't abandon your baby. What a beautiful option. It's my honor to be able to present this proclamation to you, Jana. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Go and members of the City Council. We appreciate this proclamation. And as you saw in that video, um, that video will be playing in several movie theaters throughout the month of February before the movie starts in hopes that it will remind people of this important law. And we thank First Five Kern for their funding for that program. We're also doing some radio advertising, Spanish and English, and we just hope that this message gets out there so we don't have to see another situation like we all saw that happen in New Mexico recently. We um, believe this law is effective. And as she said, we've seen 90 babies surrendered in Kern County, and six of those um, moms came back for the baby. The law does allow 14 days to reclaim the baby, but the other 84 were adopted opt-in into families that can't have children. A lot of people can't have children, and so this is a, a wonderful option. So thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to give us a second? Yes. Sure. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Public statements. 
Thank you. In keeping with Council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two-minute time limit, 20 minutes total, per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have verbal statements that are long, if you have written comments that are ver longer than your verbal statements, please give them to the clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out the public speaker card. We ask that you mark whether you're here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or on a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify the agenda item on which they wish to speak are presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. Please give your completed card. Please give your completed card to the city clerk. If you're here on public hearing item 9A, now is not the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity to speak when that item is called later in the meeting. We're very interested and concerned with your issues. However, due to the public notice requirement of the Brown Act, council can't take action when an item isn't on the agenda. The council can, however, refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you. Again, please avoid any behavior that disrupts the meeting. Behavior that disrupts the meeting includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, outbursts from the audience, surpassing the two minute time limit. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding the items listed on tonight's agenda? Mayor Go, no speaker cards were received regarding items listed on the agenda. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have any public speakers regarding items not listed on the agenda? Mayor Go, we received six speaker cards regarding non-agenda uh, item public statements. The first speaker is Mike Turnipseed. Thank you. Mr. Turnipseed? Doesn't appear that he's here. Go on to the next one, please. The next speaker, Eddie Lane. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Eddie Lane. I live at 17150 Advantage Point Court. Uh, I'm a resident of the city. I live in Councilman Weir's district. Tonight I'm referring to the letter that was submitted yesterday by the Sierra Club uh, to the mayor, to the council, and to Mr. Clegg. There's been considerable discussion regarding bringing Kern River water back to the city of Bakersfield. I am one of many who have commented before the state water board. Yesterday's letter also dealt with Kern River water, specifically water which the city of Bakersfield is selling to the county of Kern and the county's leasee, the Kern River Golf Course. This water is not being metered, even though such metering was to have begun as far back as 2014. As such, the volume of water being used by the county of Kern and the Kern River Golf Course cannot be accurately measured, nor can there be accurate charges for this water use. Also concerning, there's been no effort to require that the city of Bakersfield water restrictions apply to Kern County and the Kern River Golf Course. Water conservation planning as a part of this agreement between the City of Bakersfield and the County of Kern needs to be implemented and as soon as possible. No one wants Hart Park or the golf course greens dried up. But repeats of last summer with Hart Park sprinklers running full bore one August afternoon when it was 102 degrees and with regularly observed golf course excessive water use needs to be curtailed. City action is needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Next speaker, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Lori. Council Member, um, just a minute, uh, Madam Clerk, please. Uh, Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Could I ask staff to follow up on that, uh, whether we are charging, is there a meter, you know, et cetera? Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Madam Clerk, call the next um, one more. Council Member Freeman. A little slow on this. Side. Just a little follow up on the same subject. Um, maybe for city attorney, the, the 
The speaker has, has claimed that the county is not following the, uh, the drought mandate and conditions is pretty much what I heard, the rules. Do we have the ability to tell the county <laughs> to force them to follow the rules, or I mean, I think I would hope this speech was given to the county supervisors because they do have the authority to correct it. But I wondered if do we have the authority to correct a county, the county's behavior in the drought management? Mayor, Councilmember Freeman, I think we certainly have the authority to go ahead and cite them. I would hope, however, that uh, staff and the city manager's office would be able to. Uh, talk uh, talk to them and arrange some type of administrative uh, resolution to it, um, but ultimately I can't I can't make them do anything. I, I can go ahead and cite them, but that that would be about it. Uh, it, it Mr. Lane, are you still here? D did you did you make a similar request of the county at the supervisors meeting? Thank you. To answer your question, yes. Um, what, what I received back from the city staff was that they have not passed on the city water uh, regulations to the county. And but so I, you, you, I ask you, did you, yes. did you say this to the county and yes. did, they, did they say anything? Um, I'm trying to be diplomatic. Uh, they, they indicated that um, they have no, um, they use legalese terminology saying they have no records regarding this issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Freeman. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Lori Passante. Welcome, please introduce yourself. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is Lori Passante, and I live in Mr. Freeman's ward. A uh, resident of the city of Bakersfield uh, speaking tonight on behalf of the Current Equitable Maps Coalition. Um, I have handed to your clerk a handout in anticipation of your redistricting hearing coming up on the 23rd. And indeed, I was really excited to see some community maps and some analysis online. Um, really exciting to see some of the possibilities out there. Um, what your clerk is going to give to you and what I will be handing up. Uh, distributing digitally as well is an interactive web map that we have created where you can put in your address or anybody else's address and click on layers so that you can see our proposed map lines and the current lines at the same time so you can compare and see what changes were made and start to see some of the additional possibilities that are out there. Um, and I figured you'd want to have it now so you can have some time to play around with um, also the constitutionally protected class layers that we have on there, where you can see why we made some of the choices that we made and really explore it. Um, additionally, I wanted to reiterate some requests that we had made that um, either we didn't get a response to or, um, you know, it, I don't know that it was, you know, conveyed um, completely to this council because there's been some confusion about, I guess you guys don't have individual email addresses um, for your roles as city council members, and I'm not totally sure why that's the case, but um, at any rate, uh, we wanted to request shape files for all proposed maps, and, and don't worry, you don't have to know what a shape file is. Our request was basically, can you ask your demographer to send us this information? And so I have my list of six requests there, um, just in case some additional follow-up is required. Um, nothing that we're asking for is unusual or uncommon for redistricting. Um, and indeed, every jurisdiction pretty much has been able to accommodate them. Um, it is the case also that you know, Bakersfield um, has had some challenges with regard to some transparency. So I really want to encourage this council to um, encourage staff to, to really think seriously about these requests, and I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fasante. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Wendell Wesley, Jr. Good evening. Please introduce yourself. Good evening, um, Mayor Goh, City Council members. My name is Wendell Wesley, Jr. I live at 1125 California Avenue, 
building A213. Uh, it's Ward 1. And um, I'm here to talk a little bit about affordable housing. Uh, right now, as things currently stand, in most areas, affordable housing scales are set on people's gross income and not their net income. So it's income that they never have received, period. So when you look at the percentage, it's really much different or quite different than what the guideline states, which is a huge hardship. It's part of the problem. When families struggle, especially if it's a single family household uh, or single parent household or uh, a household with someone that's living on a fixed income, they're gonna struggle all the much more, meaning there's hardly any room for saving for emergency funds, uh, let alone car repairs or anything else. It's huge hardship to our communities. Some people under those pressures and hardships uh, succumb to certain types of um, disorders that will lead to everything from uh, drinking, too much alcohol, just to deal with the stress of it all, to eventually slipping and crashing into a life spiraling out of control with drugs, which is, uh, leads us to another problem, um, which eventually leads to homelessness, uh, other drug addictions, which is a massive amount of crime uh, that is um, the direct result of uh, these issues of um, affordable housing. So something that um, I'm asking the city council to take a serious hard look at, and uh, we need to kind of do this unilaterally to the point to where when we come over for great solution, uh, we can share this with other counties around us so we don't get flooded because we're doing things right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Next speaker, please. Emma De La Rosa. Good evening. My name is Emma De La Rosa, Policy Advocate with Leadership Council for Justice and Accountability. My comment is in regard to the affordable housing strategy and housing conditions in the city. First of all, I'd like to thank the um, Community and Economic Development for, um, Department for extending the deadline to complete the survey to a later date than we suggested. Um, I also want to bring attention to the process of how the development of the strategy is being conducted. Um, this topic was not introduced at a public meeting where residents could give feedback um, in person or learn more about this process. It's a very complex issue and I think we need to provide it the time um, to, to invite residents to learn about this. Um, focus groups were conducted, but none which uh, residents participated in. Also, the survey for the most part is being conducted online. I do appreciate Rogelio's and Jason's um, efforts in trying to reach community members, but we must implement different approaches to ensure that folks who are being impacted by housing issues are actually being reached. Um, we, so we urge the city to engage residents in the development of the strategy outside of the survey, such as conducting community workshops and meetings in impacted neighborhoods. Uh, the city must also release a plan for public review, request feedback, and include that feedback in the plan. Um, Y'all know that you are very behind on the regional housing needs allocation progress, and we must not lose sight of that. We appreciate the, the recent funding that's being um, put out for affordable housing. Um, but I would also like to bring attention to the fact that rents are rising because of the uh, housing developments that are happening right now on, in, in downtown and also on the west side, right? Uh, we see articles after articles talking about rents increasing, and I understand the need for development and revitalization, but we have to take care of the people who live here first. We need to, we need to uh, think about policies to ensure that rents are not gonna continuously increase and displace community members. Um, so we do urge you to look into different policies such as those, um, and also affirmatively further fair housing by providing affordable housing units in high opportunity areas. Your own planning commission has also mentioned the need to uh, build housing in in other areas as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LaRosa. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Veronica oh, Perez. I'm sorry. Uh, before we do that, uh, Council Member Arias would like to address this. Thank you, Mayor. Just really quick, a uh, couple of points. Wanna to, want to thank Emma for raising those points and also wanna thank Jason and his team and, and Paul over at Economic Development uh, for taking seriously, you know, the efforts to engage the community on affordable housing strategy. I think that's very important. Uh, but I just want to mention that, you know, 
I, I don't think it's it, a good practice, nor do I think it's our responsibility as, as government uh, to play the role of engaging the community. I think that there are partners in the community who have those authentic, genuine relationships with community members and stakeholders. Um, and I think there are certainly some opportunities, and we've done it in the past. I think through TCC has been uh, somewhat successful. But I think moving forward with larger projects that require that level of engagement with community, we should absolutely be looking into potentially subcontracting that work so that they can uh, utilize those networks that they already have. Um, so I think that's certainly something that I'm looking forward to. Um, and encouraging the broader community to continue to engage on the affordable housing strategy as the deadline is coming up soon. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker, please, Madam Clerk. Veronica Perez. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Veronica Perez. Y quiero agradecer por la oportunidad. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. Um, Estoy aquí porque quiero pedirles su apoyo, independientemente de quién es el líder o la persona que pueda apoyarnos en esto. I'm here to ask for your support, independently of who is the leader of um, who can help us on this effort. Y es el proyecto de affordable housing. And, and I'm referring to the affordable housing strategy. Porque considero que es importante que alcance para personas de bajos ingresos y trabajadores del campo como yo. Because it's important to reach community members of low, who are low income and are farm workers like myself. Personalmente tengo 14 años viviendo en Bakersfield y se me ha negado la oportunidad de poder comprar una vivienda debido a mis bajos ingresos. I personally lived here for 14 years and I've been denied um, the opportunity to purchase a, purchase a home because I am low income. Um, espero que Dios toque sus corazones y de esa manera, um, con la ayuda de Dios y el apoyo de ustedes, este proyecto llegue a ser y alcance a personas de bajos ingresos como yo. I hope that God touches your hearts and that you support us in this effort and that with God's help and your help, we'll be able to uh, reach people like myself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Perez. Madam Clerk, any other speakers? That was our last speaker, Mayor. Mayor. Thank you. Mayor. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Perez, thank you so much for coming out today and speaking. And um, I just want to make a recommendation and request from city staff is that we have appropriate um, uh, devices and uh, equipment provided to all of our uh, constituents in our community. Uh, when they attend, spe specifically as it relates to Spanish language uh, translation devices um, and equipment so that everyone can be um, welcomed and this meeting is accessible to all. I would also further ask that we um, plan ahead and begin looking at how we can at least uh, provide uh, a cover sheet to our agendas in uh, multiple languages to meet our diverse and growing community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Appointment item 6A, nine appointments to the uh, PSVS committee due to the expiration of terms of all current members. Terms expire February 2022. We have received applications from the following individuals. <clears throat> Kathy Abernathy, Ken Keller, Carla Nesita, Vaughn Scholl, Connie Perez Andreessen, Mark Dewey, Larry Komen, Nicholas Ortiz, Robert Smith, Donalda Biscar, Jordan Dixon, Eric McDerris, Lori Pesante, Jinping Sun, Matab Singh, Ronald Fraz, Erica Mullins, Frederick Prince, and James Welch. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The process of appointing nine individuals to the Citizens Oversight Committee was established by amendment one to resolution number 
919 that was adopted by council at the January 19th, 2022 meeting. The appointment process was revised to allow each of the seven council members and the mayor to nominate one member to the committee. Following the nomination and confirmation vote by the council and mayor, one at large member will be appointed through a ballot process. So the process now, we're gonna take the first step. Uh, we'll each, I will call on each of you for your nominee and then we will um, move forward from there. So it is my pleasure to nominate Frederick Prince. We'll start here with uh, Ward 1, Council Member Arias. Thank you, Mayor. I nominate Mark Dewey, a Bakersfield native who has served our community for over 30 years as a local electrician. Uh, and he continues to inspire the next generation of hardworking young men and women uh, through a local apprenticeship program that focuses on electrical entrepreneurship. He has extensive experience overseeing large construction projects, and I know he will serve this great city uh, well on Measure N. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Arias. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Connie Perez Andreessen. Thank you, Council Member Gonzalez. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Nicholas Ortiz. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Vice Mayor. Thank you. I'd like to nominate Ken Keller. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And now, Council Member Freeman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Larry Coleman, who is a member of our Planning Commission. Thank you, Council Member Freeman. Council Member Gray. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Kathy Abernathy. Thank you, Council Member Gray. And now, Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate Dr. Matab Singh. Thank you, Council Member Parlier. I move approval of the nominees. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Our next step will involve the city clerk preparing ballots with the remaining names. So we'll take a short recess at this time while she prepares those ballots for the at-large appointment. And for any of those who were here and were appointed in the first group, thank you so much. I see Mr. Ortiz in the audience. I don't think I see anyone else. But thank you for your willingness to serve. And so we'll just uh, break for two to three minutes while the clerk has an opportunity to prepare the ballots. Mayor Go, I have tallied the votes. And Donalda Biscar received four. Erica Mullins received three. Donalda Biscar received the most votes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And now, and thank you to all of uh, those who applied and were willing to serve, and thank you all of who will be serving as we move forward. We look forward to working with all of you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Uh, oh, I we do need, oh, sorry, one minor detail. Vice Mayor. I move the appointment of Donalda, Donalda Biscar. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar items 7A through 7T for approval. We have received a blue memo transmitting the minutes. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Does any council member wish to abstain from any item? Seeing none, items 7H, 7M, and 7C are being pulled for separate comment consideration and I move approval of item 7A to 7T with those exceptions. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Yeah. 
Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, Councilmember Parlier for 7C. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Christian, when Michael Turnip Seed was here earlier talking, he mentioned uh, regarding the state mandate, um, if we didn't comply, or maybe Jenny, she might be able to answer this too, but if we don't comply uh, with this, uh, what would happen if we push back on the state? Uh, council member, um, I, I may defer to our public works director if he wants to add to this, but um, there, there are uh, significant um, uh, consequences from the state for not complying. I'll take the opportunity to just suggest that uh, while this action uh, does adopt the state required code language, uh, consideration to the costs and the rates will be addressed through this budget process. It will go first to the Budget and Finance Committee at our next meeting and then also to the City Council through the budget process. But this simply adopts what's required by the state. Okay, thank you. A couple more uh, questions on it. There was an op-ed in a paper uh, not that long ago uh, regarding basically the City of Bakersfield imposing this on, uh, on the public. And so I think we could be a little bit clearer in our messaging uh, to the public that this is actually coming through the state and we're implementing because of that. Now, when it comes to these type of materials and the new cans that are going out, this type of waste when it's 110 degrees uh, might get a little stinky in those cans. Uh, so I think we need to have a plan, whether that plan is through public works or we contract some cleaning of, you know, occasionally for these cans. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have a, a real stinky mess on our hands. Thank you. Motion approved. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Are we having... Mayor Go, I need to conduct a roll call vote. Please do that. Go ahead. Vice Mayor Weir? Aye. Council Member Arias? Aye. Council Member Gonzalez? Aye. Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Freeman? Aye. Council Member Gray? Aye. And Council Member Parlier? Aye. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, item 7H, Councilmember Gonzalez, please. Thank you, Mayor Go. Um, just wanted to make a comment that um, my colleagues, Council Members uh, Arias and Smith, and I um, had a meeting with Caltrans along with uh, City Manager Clegg, along, along with uh, other folks from City Hall um, last Friday, and it was a very productive meeting regarding. Um, State Route 204 and Union Avenue and some of the safety concerns. I feel like we're moving in the right direction. Um, um, and so I just want to thank staff for pressing this issue with Cal Caltrans. And I want to thank Caltrans for their partnership. And I'm looking forward to a future presentation from Caltrans at this council. So with that, I'll move uh, adoption of the resolution. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, Vice Mayor, for item 7M. Thank you, Mayor. Item 7M is for an environmental impact report for site plan review for, um, from TNB planning. But what this really is, we're back on the path to get a veteran center. And I hope, I hope we're on the final path and eventually we will have the services we need for our veterans. I move approval. Thank you. If the motion, please cast your votes.
apologize, Mayor Go. I need to conduct a roll call vote once Go again. Go ahead. Vice Mayor Weir. Yes. Councilmember Arias. Aye. Councilmember Gonzalez. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Freeman. Yes. Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Parlier. Aye. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Our next item is public hearings. Each side will be allowed 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes for all speakers per side. So it's important that you identify yourself, make your statement succinctly so others may speak. We'll hear statement from those opposed to the staff's recommendation first, then we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of the staff's recommendation. If there's testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the TV screens behind me, which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and after 14 minutes, a yellow light will come on. At the end of 15 minutes, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up. Quickly end your statement. You may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be addressed until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk. She'll provide copies to the council, and please be courteous to others who wish to speak. Madam Clerk, would you please read the public hearing item? Public hearing to consider the resolution of summary vacation of that portion of the waiver of direct access adjacent to 1901 White Lane. Thank you. City Manager Clegg. Thank you, Council Member. I uh, do believe that um, there uh, is some additional context to this. And uh, so we'll turn uh, time to staff to provide some of that context. Thank you, Mr. Clegg. Mayor Go, um, members of the City Council, Greg Strackaloos, Public Works Director. Uh, this is a um, vacation for a waiver of direct access, which is essentially the allowance of a curb cut or access to a public right of way, a local road. There are two types of vacations, one is of land and the other is of either an, uh, a right or a restriction on that land. This is the latter. Um, for this particular vacation request, staff has noticed properties within 300 feet of the subject property. We have not received any notification back from those property owners, uh, a few questions, but really no objection from property owners in that 300 foot perimeter. Um, and staff recommends approval of the vacation. Thank you. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to staff's recommendation? If so, please step to the microphone. Seeing none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in support of staff's recommendation? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and return it to council for comment and action. I don't see any request to speak. Council Member Parley? Motion approved. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. Or do you need to do roll call? Madam Clerk? Okay, we'll see whether this works. Let's Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now next item, please. Under deferred business, item 11A, general plan amendment zone change number 21-0284. Thank you, City Manager Clegg. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, this uh, particular item uh, was discussed at our last meeting and I believe uh, in light of uh, the recommendation that has come uh, from the applicant um, to defer uh, this discussion uh, would defer from providing you know, further uh, um, context or, or brief on this item at this time. Thank you. Councilmember Weir. Yeah, that's it. Right. Uh, and now, next item, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have to? Oh, you're going to have to do. <laughs> Go ahead. I move staff's Sorry. recommendation. You have a motion? Please cast your votes. I thought you said no. <laughs> 
Mayor Go, I will conduct roll call voting. Thank you. Go ahead. Vice Mayor Weir? Yes. Councilmember Arias? Aye. Councilmember Gonzalez? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Councilmember Freeman? Yes. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Parlier? Aye. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, next item, please. Council and Mayor's statements. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things tonight. Uh, one, I just want to give a huge shout out to our economic development team and our housing folks. They were part of uh, an application with the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities Program through the state um, and were successfully awarded $14.7 million for the Renaissance at Baker Street. This is the affordable housing mixed use project. Um, with 85 units for extremely low and low income families. This will be a huge boost uh, for um, not only Old Town Kern, but also to meet um, the needs of our community as it relates to affordable housing and the affordable housing crisis that we're experiencing. Um, I also want to share that uh, GetBus has answered the city's call and my cries for uh, the installation of eight new bus shelters um, at the locations uh, surrounding Monterey and Nile Street. So this is a huge plus for many of those who, who depend on the bus every day for transportation to and from school and work and uh, to, to just live. And uh, they are asking the city's help uh, to improve curb cuts at the Dollar General at Niles and Williams, along with improved sidewalks, as well as building a pad at Baker and King Street, along with some curb cuts. And so in the past, they've provided the city with TDA funds uh, to make improvements to uh, sidewalks, curb cuts, and, and bus shelter pads, and these, these uh, things. Um, and so I, I'd like to ask uh, staff if they will reach out to get bus and see if we can uh, accommodate their requests so that we can get these shelters uh, set up and ready to go in, in time for the summer months. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Freeman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, as the council knows, uh, I'm not one for passing out compliments, but I want to say, uh, <laughs> um, I want to compliment uh, city manager staff. I think Pilar is the main one, but all of, all of the individuals who are helping with all the inquiries that come into my ward, directing them immediately to the proper person. Generally, it's on staff, whether it's public works, parks and rec, any problem they have, and then sending immediately to me the ones that need to talk to me. It's, it, before you put this system in, I would spend hours trying to get a hold of public works, trying to get a park. It would take days for people to get an immediate response. Now they get a quick response. All I do is read thank you letters from the people, from the public, on the incredible service. So it's, made a, it's making a change in the perception of City, of city government and city staff and responsiveness. So just it's, they're just doing a fantastic job. And it allows me, because I always get notified immediately someone who needs to talk to me that staff, you know, it isn't a staff issue. So it's a wonderful system. It's efficient. And um, they're just doing a great job. So kudos to all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, question for public works, about how many miles of arterials do we have in town? I'm going to guess 500, 300, I've heard that number before. I, I just want to make the point, we heard earlier, you know, we've talked about Union Avenue, that's a three mile route, and the statement was made that 20% of the deaths are made there, and we're not talking about our streets. That route is at least 100 times more dangerous than anywhere else in town and that's why we're focused on it and that's why we want to save those lives so we appreciate caltrans working with us and moving forward but it is without a doubt the most dangerous route in bakersfield thank you thank you councilmember smith councilmember parlier thank you mayor three items uh we did an annexation a while back in the harris neighborhood uh the roads were in pretty rough shape when we absorbed it from the county if Public Works can take a look at that, uh, at some point it's probably going to have to be a complete redo, but maybe a heavy blade seal in the, the interim. Uh, so we spent hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for TRIP, 
And as you go down the freeway, 58, 99, if you notice, if it's a gray wall and there's graffiti on it, Caltrans paints it out with three different colors of gray. If it's a tan wall, they, they paint it out with three or four different colors of tan. And I reached out to Caltrans and I said, can you just pick one gray and one tan and uh, call it Caltrans gray, Caltrans tan, I don't care. But uh, the response was, that's what we get from Sacramento. So I'm gonna ask staff to reach out to them and maybe you can have some better luck. And But if you don't, I'm going to ask the city manager's office to reach out to our state electeds and, and see if they can get some traction with it. Uh, last thing is we uh, talk about uh, police and fire and, and our public safety heroes in that regard, but we never really talk about the police and fire dispatchers. So I'd like to uh, have a conversation just basically what they do uh, and the rigors of their job in safe neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Parlier. Councilmember Gray. Well, I'll do a shout out also behind uh, Councilmember Freeman. We are seeing wonderful response. And so good job to the staff and, and how that's working out. It's been great. Um, tonight, as we've been conducting our meeting, there's been a prayer service taking place for our law enforcement officers and first responders at the Liberty Bell. I, as a Bakersfield citizen, Kern County native, am comforted uh, by those who took time out this evening to cover our local officers in prayer. We are very blessed in our community because our officers and first responders are appreciated. In the past few weeks, we've all heard of several officers that have fallen across the nation watching their funeral processions on TV and so forth. Um, and I would just like to remind us, and frankly myself, too, not to take for granted those who are taking good care of us and protecting our lives every single day that we wake up. Um, I also want to thank our faith community for reaching out and um, leading the way for us and, and bringing it to our attention again of how blessed we are. Um, I'd also like to recognize the efforts of many volunteers in this city. We, our, our city runs on volunteers. We've got 1,800 employees at, at the city of Bakersfield, but thousands across this county that are taking care of those that are less fortunate. So I want to do a shout out for them. Like, and then our groups like Keep Bakersfield Beautiful and also bring back the Kern Group that has been cleaning up uh, the Kern Riverbed monthly now and gathering their teams together so that we have a more beautiful place. So we're very fortunate in Bakersfield. It's the most generous, I think, most generous community in the state of California. And I just want to give a shout out to all those people that are making it a wonderful place to live. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. I don't see any other requests to speak. Thank you all for participating tonight. Thank you for your patience with our technology. We were notified before the meeting that our provider was having some issues. So thank you for your patience. I want to do a special shout out again to Carter. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Youth Commissioner appointed by Councilmember Smith. You were here the entire meeting, which uh, doesn't typically happen. And when I was talking with Carter earlier, he says one of these days he hopes to sit up here. So thank you for uh, your tenacity, your leadership at school, and uh, just your service to our community. And with that, now we are adjourned at 645.